there, I'm Black Bright broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, please like, subscribe, share. And if you don't like what I talk about, you put the thumbs down. But basically, I just talk about literally anything under the sun to do with injustice and to do with immigration matters, not as a professional or an authority, but just to update. And returning subscribers, thank you for your support and your your encouraging words. I wanted to talk about the definition of a foreign criminal offender because, or a foreign national sometimes they call it, sometimes they call it a foreign national offender or foreign national criminal or a foreign criminal offender, whatever meets their fancy. But I wanted to let you know the definition because until today, I was listening to this panel discussion. Thank you, Glenda Andrew, for sending me the panel discussion. And I didn't realise that they changed, well, they hadn't changed the definition. There wasn't no such thing as a foreign national offender, as far as I'm aware, um, before the hostile environment policy. So, what is a foreign national offender now? Now, I would have thought it was somebody who'd spent time in jail, um, over four years and um, they're eligible for deport deportation on release from jail. But that's not the case, my dear people. What a foreign national offender is now is anyone who has committed a crime at any time in the UK, regardless of how far back as, and who is not born in the UK. So, if you committed a crime when you were 20, 21, 30, and now you're 60, or you're 40, or you're 50, they can still nab you. And, and refer to your criminal past as an excuse to call you a foreign criminal offender. Now, these people who they have been deporting come under that category. They have left jail years ago. They're not just being released. Like in the States, you commit a crime, you do the time, and then you're deported straight afterwards if it's a serious crime. You, there's no hesitation. Within a week, you're gone. Oh, but not in the UK. That would be too humane. What they do in the UK is they, you've, you've committed your crime, You've done your time, you've gone out into the community, you've started a family, you've started rehabilitating yourself, you've started working, you have children, and then 10 or 15 years later, they round you up and say, oh, you have a criminal past, here's a deportation order, you're going to be deported back. And then they make them look like such criminals. Yes, they have committed a crime, but some of them have done 12 months and they only did half of that. We know that somebody was deported for a driving offence, and yeah, that was a stupid thing to do. But deportation has rules, and it has boundaries. And you can't just deport somebody just because they're foreign and because they're a criminal, or they have a criminal past, which is what they're doing. Anybody with a criminal past who's done time, and I'm hoping it's if they've done time and not that they've just cre um, got a criminal record, but that might be the next stage. But for now, if you've done time in the UK and you weren't born in the UK, that could be the outcome. I think it's the, I'm going to put the panel discussion in the description below so you can, um, you can gather your thoughts about, it also tells you a bit about the history. Um, I mean, I know you've probably know about it because it's been regurgitated so many times, but basically, prior to 1973, um, anybody who came to the UK from the Commonwealth had right to abode. They didn't. They could go and come. They didn't need any visas. They, had, um, they could stay for even five years out of the country. And then in 2003, they introduced the visa from Jamaica to the UK. It was only £35 at the time. And that was the start. It must have been in 2003 that they decided, look, 
We can't allow these people to just come and go at will. So what we'll do is introduce a visa system. We'll start it off cheap for now, but at least with a visa, it, it what it does is tells you that you need authority to enter the country. So from that point, from 2003, Jamaicans should have been worried. And anyone from the Commonwealth who needs a visa to get into the UK. And the thing with the UK, they change the rules as they go along. Before 1973, you had birthright citizenship. As long as you was born on the soil, soil you, were, you was a citizen. I think even up until 1981, that was the case. And then all of a sudden, in 1982, out comes the British Nationality Act, and you have to claim citizenship. And then it depends on who the parents are, where the parents are from, whether or not they're both British, whether or not one is British, which one of the parents are British. Is it the man? Then, OK, he can get automatic citizenship, providing he applies. Not even automatic. He has to apply. And you know how much it is to apply? Over a £1,000. And as a result of it being over a £1,000, I hear that we've got over 100,000 children, allegedly, who could be in this country illegally. But that's a different video. So they, it's just at whim. They just decide, oh, you know, we don't want this to happen. So let's change the law. Let's change legislation. And so it's not a stable it's not a stable country and laws don't mean anything because laws can be changed. They say laws are meant to be broken. They're not meant to be changed at such a degree that it affects people's lives and their expectations. But that is what's happening. Oh, I don't know what I can say about this, peeps. I just wanted to make sure that I covered most of the things. Like I said, I am going to um, put the link in. And those people who were deported, those so-called foreign criminal offenders, they were made to look like criminals. That big bus that I showed you yesterday, big police bus to make them feel as humiliated as possible. That's what it is. Coming out with their bags, easy targets. Everybody has to know say, they were deported. Why couldn't they do it in a more humane manner? And I hear that they've been trying to speak, to get some information from the Jamaican government, but Jamaican government is very quiet on the subject. They're saying they have a sensitive document to, you know, and it can't be discussed, apparently. It's between the UK and the foreign national country. So I wonder what's in that document. Like I said, I think there's a deal being made. They don't want us to know what that deal is. But at the very least, Jamaicans, knowing Jamaicans, should allow them to have their dignity. They can't, okay, so you have to accept them, but accept them in a discreet way so that they're not out in the open walking the streets with their bags. Everybody has to see, everybody taking pictures. Then you know it's on Facebook, it's gone viral. I mean, the one I did yesterday, that's got, that went viral already. I think, um, I can't, don't know how many views it had, but I'm sure it had over 7,000 views. I know that much. So no wonder people are hiding their faces. They don't want to be targets. But there's no compassion at all. And OK, like I said, you know, if you have to deport them, if they're if they are um, authentic criminals, serious criminals, menace to society. Then by all means. But we know that's not the case. You know, 12 months, that's not a serious crime. Anything under two to three years. And the thing is, is that the police or the courts are up in the um, prison sentences. So it falls in the category for deportation, regardless of how minor the crime is. 
they make they you know they build it up to you know either whether it's whether it's because um, they're a bit cheeky or whether they retaliate or whether they're feisty. They say, okay, you've um, even if they stop them for a little piece of weed, then. And you give them an attitude. Okay, this is what they call, I forget what they call it when you're aggravating a police officer. Oh, we'll add a couple of years onto that. So they make sure it exceeds the three to four years, which guarantees deportation with no discussion. Oh, and with regard to the 17, you, like I said, you'll, you'll see in the um, panel discussion below, we was, I was talking about yesterday, what happened to the other, they claimed it was 29, how come it was only 17? Apparently it was because there were three um, detention centres, one is called Colnbrook, the other one's called Harmonsworth, and the other one is called Brook House. So Colne, Colne, Colnebrook and Harmonsworth, they're the ones that didn't have the... Um, the, the signal to the phones, the O2 signal, but Brookhouse did. So they're the ones that have been detained, but the ones who were held in Brookhouse are the ones who actually boarded the plane. So that's why there's a discrepancy. We do not know, like I said, as of now, as far as I know, we do not know how long it's going to be stayed for, how long they're going to be in the country for, in the UK, before they're deported. But... They reckon between five, ten days, it could be a bit longer, depending. I think they said a further, there are some more who have um, justified appeals and who should not be on that plane. And I think they will win out those appeals. So you can understand why the, the um, border force don't want them to have access to legal advice because they're not supposed to be on the planes. They're trying to sneak them out. And once they're gone, once they're over the other side, they know they can't get back over because, you know, it costs a lot of money. And they know once they go over, it's going to cost a lot of money to appeal. And what they were saying also is that if, if you appeal, it's at your own expense in the country that you've been sent to. So it's not like they can, if they, if they don't get to appeal before they leave, they've got to appeal abroad and you can imagine how difficult that is so those people who have been deported not all of them are your hardened criminals as they call them some of them i don't know which is which i don't know which ones have done the serious crimes and which one hasn't but they can't be all put in the same basket and treated the same and they shouldn't have been treated the same they should have a separate um bus or um vehicle for the serious criminals and those who might have overstayed or those who might have done a because if you've overstayed that's still a criminal offense so you can be deported for overstaying so you don't have to be a, a, a massive criminal so and those who have done lesser crimes or who have overstayed or whatever other reason they're deporting them they should go in another vehicle and I, I don't, and the fact that they're allowing them out and walking up and down the street, you know that they're not hardened criminals. Otherwise, they'd be going from jail to jail, I would have thought. Anyway, I always get so passionate about that, but I've, got, I've galvanized most of the information from the um, panel discussion. I hope you um, find this useful. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I hadn't missed anything. Yeah, I was just thinking those people that they deport, um, bearing in mind the circumstances that they did the crime over 10 years ago in some cases. And they've got married since and they've got children. Can you imagine those children and the wife? That's like death. It's like, you know, they're going to go through the grieving process, being separated like that. And what does it remind you of? Men being separated from their wives and their families. What is that reminiscent of? I'm not going to give you the answer because I know you know. <sighs> yeah, and I was also thinking, you know, they're sitting ducks right for the picking. Because if they've got a criminal record, at some point they either have to report or they have to um, 
they know where they are and even if they're legit and they they did that crime a long time ago they probably think okay i'm okay i i I've, I've got nothing to i've got nothing to worry about because can you imagine you did a crime when you was about 18 just say for example you did a crime when you were about 18 you're getting on with your life now all of a sudden you get a deportation order that says oh you, you, we've noticed that you did a crime in such and such a year. Anyone who's done a crime and they're not a UK citizen is eligible for deportation. So here's your deportation letter. Can you imagine? After you've done your time and you're, you're adjusting, you've rehabilitated yourself, you're working in the system, you're doing everything okay you might have, we don't know what crime you committed or why you committed it we don't know the circumstances but you're getting on you, you you're minding your own business and then that happens can you imagine how you would feel so don't judge them too harshly that oh that's all i'm saying don't judge them too harshly the media has a goal to make them look as menacing and as as menacing as possible. They're trying to humiliate them in the worst possible way. But not everything you see is as it is. Sometimes they create an image for us to swallow. And a lot of times that is what they're doing. It's all imagery. When you see that big um, police coach, what does that tell you? What image does that convey to you? It conveys an image that, oh, that's the UK police bus. That's the UK deportation bus. That is the bus that's got all the criminals on it. When you see them get off the bus and their heads are held down and they, they you know, they've got those little pound bags and they're trying to get out of the area as quick as possible. What does it tell you? Oh, those people, I mean, there is in England, them think them did do well, they was doing so well, and look what happened to them, look how them have to come back. What a disgrace, what an embarrassment. Can you imagine? That is the image that they want to portray. Their goal is to humiliate these black men as much as possible. as much as possible and if anybody i mean it's good to know well it's a bit difficult it's in the sense that on the one hand we want to know the information like it was great having the information to see how many came off and how many people were there and see them arrive but on the other hand it's very degrading for them to be filmed in that situation you know, and on that side, it's, it's not nice for the people who have been deported. Because I know if it was me, and I had been deported, and I had people taking photographs of me in my most vulnerable state, I would feel so bad. But it's, 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 the, way, it's the way life is now, isn't it? Everything is visible everything is recorded it's evidence it's giving us information it's letting us know how people are being treated it's letting us know how the Jamaican government is failing its people by not receiving them in a dignified manner anyway I think I've gone on long enough I'm not going to go on anymore and that's all for now bye bye